just come up to the um, eighth or the last move of the sort of eight brocades type movement um, in with another 18 form. So you have two forms together, 18 form Quigong sequence with the eight brocade. So it's 26 form. This is the last of the eight brocade part. Um, doesn't really matter. You can either do this in sequence. It's 26 form with two forms stuck together. Um, or you can do the single leg because we're going right into the breath of each motion because these movements are so good, they're too good to waste. Um, again, this one is done in a style of yogic, pilates, hypnotic type breath in with the motion. Uh, this motion's called shake the back seven times, eliminate the hundred illnesses, the by being the hundred illnesses within the eight brocades they talk about. Um, but again, don't get too caught up in that. <clears throat> Gone more into that in other videos in a more traditional way uh, to do it with all the meridians, electromagnetic rivers that you're benefiting and the organs as each specific one does within the form. Um, we're going down a different line. Just with the motion, the breath synchronized motion, that's all we're doing, um, vinyasa in Sanskrit, breath synchronized motion. So with that, I'm gonna go straight into that with all them details. But again, it's just motion with a bit of breathing. So don't get too caught up in it. It's just mind candy. Um, feel better at the end of it, great. So, zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals. You're bringing the Pilates principles straight away with that. So as you do that now, you zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals. And one won't go without the other anyway. I'm just going for it segmentally. If you scoop out your abdominals, you'll zip up pelvic floor and vice versa. But again, zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals. As you do that now, right now, you'll feel that go into these lower lobes of lungs, into costals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. So you're gonna start on a Pilates style. So as you do that now, zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals. You're gonna breathe in from the nose, and for now, we're gonna exhale through pursed lips. So you're sort of blowing out a candle through pursed lips in a normal Pilates manner, okay? Now, as you do that, we're gonna get the two middle fingers touching underneath the breast bones, shoulders down, because 90% of us are overactive in these upper traps, so it's good to keep these shoulders down. And as you put these two middle fingers underneath what we call the xiphoid process, just underneath the sternum, okay, there, palms on the lower lobes of the lungs. Now, as you keep on zipping up pelvic floor and scooping out your abdominals, breathing in through the nose and exhaling through pursed lips, you'll feel the two middle fingers slightly part and come back to touch each other, okay? Like that, I'm just overemphasizing that so you can see that. It might be a micro move, that's all. Doesn't have to be as much as this. You're breathing through the nose and you're exhaling through pursed lips. And you'll feel this happen. These middle fingers just moving like seaweed on the bottom of the seabed. So as you do that, as you zip up pelvic floor and scoop out your abdominals, Feeling this breath going low and deep to these lower lobes of lungs, into costals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. Okay, once you're used to that, you can take the hands away or just leave them there. You'll find you're breathing into these lower lobes of lungs. Again, that's just to let you know that. But again, you can take them away, them hands. And again, that will naturally happen anyway because you're breathing anywhere but the belly button. Unlike the traditional form where you breathe into the belly like a balloon, Okay, that's more meditative breath, that's fine. But again, for this, we're going down the Pilates setup as if you were lifting something, you'll be zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out your abdominals. So throw in this corset muscle, the transverse abdominus, the powerhouse, the girdle of strength, three layers deep, which is all segmentally stabilizing the spine. Okay, you don't have to know that, but that's gonna happen anyway. In that Pilates style, as you keep on zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out your abdominals, breathing in through the nose, and exhaling through pursed lips, okay? That's gonna naturally happen as you breathe in low and deep to these lower lobes of lungs, these fish gills, organ deep, sow deep, even bone marrow deep into these lower lobes of lungs, into costals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. So we can use our corset muscle, our powerhouse, our girdle of strength muscle in the most efficient manner, helping us breathe anywhere but the belly button, helping us breathe into these lower lobes of lungs, into costals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. Is this someone sort of wrapped a scarf tightly around your ribs and you're breathing to that scarf wide and full? Or someone's just pushing out from inside your ribs and letting go? You can imagine someone's 
Open an umbrella inside your rib cage and letting go. Just add in width to the lungs and length of the out breath as you exhale through pursed lips. Now we're gonna change that. We're gonna close the mouth and keep doing that. Keep zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out your abdominals. Breathing in through the nose now and out through the nose. As you keep the mouth shut, that's gonna help us go a little bit more yogic with the breath in a manner of that more cleansing breath and longer breath. Because of the smaller filter through the nose, it helps us filter the breath and elongate the breath without even trying. Okay, lovely. So that goes down the yogic path a little bit more, more cleansing breath. Now again, you can stick with that, but as you zip up pelvic floor and scoop out your abdominals right now and keep on breathing in through the nose and out through the nose, you'll feel you want to naturally allow the out breath to fall longer than the in breath. So just simply allow that to happen. Allow that natural unfolding of that out breath. It will naturally want to fall longer than the in breath. Allow that to happen. Okay, and then consciously take your mind to that out breath. So rather than the breath breathe you, you're going to breathe the breath, that out breath. You're going to quadruple it, double it, triple it, without whatever you like, the out breath. Just make it longer than the in breath within your limits without forcing anything. Okay, so zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals still, breathe in through the nose and out through the nose and elongate the out breath longer than the in breath within your limits. Okay, again in a yogic manner, that elongated out breath will help us melt into asanas, etc. In the same manner, we're using them yogic principles, the out breaths, the bridge between the mind and the body. It's our gauge to see how deeply relaxed we can get into these postures without even trying or try not to try. As you elongate the out breath longer than the in breath, breathing through the nose and out through the nose. Lovely. Now again, if you want to take on to more Hypnotic breath, you just elongate the out breath. Again, I was gonna jump forward then. So again, we're still zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out abdominals. The in breath's conscious thought. The out breath is subconscious thought. So by extending the out breath longer than the in breath, we're bringing all them sort of hypnotic principles. A bit like 7-Eleven breathing. The out breath's longer than the in breath. So you're encouraging the subconscious part of the mind to come in, okay, and be benefited by elongating your out breath longer than the in breath. Allowing that simplicity to relax the mind as you keep zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out your abdominals, breathing in out through the nose, but elongating the out breath longer than the in breath. Simply allow that simplicity to relax the mind at will. Okay, and that'll help benefit in a hypnotic way the parasympathetic nervous system, sleep, digestion, rest, and relaxation, all the things you don't think about too much are benefited by elongating the out breath longer than the in breath, okay? Lovely. Again, cellular communication, just allowing that relaxation to soak into every single organ cell, sinew of the body, as you keep zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out your abdominals, breathing through the nose, and elongating the out breath for as long as you like, through the nose. Lovely. Cellular communication has benefited. Again, organ function, all things like that. The housekeeping parts of the body are benefited by elongating the out breath. Longer than the in breath. Just bringing in hypnotic principles. Lovely. Now again, you can stick with that or go to Ujjayi breath, slightly more advanced yogic breath. If you can't get this, don't worry. Just carry on as you are now, zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out your abdominals, and elongating the out breath for as long as you like. Now again, if you want to bring in this Ujjayi breath, victorious breath in Sanskrit, I'm going to demonstrate. We breathe in through the nose, and we grip it this esophagus. If you can hear that sound, it's like a Darth Vader breath nearly. It's a... And you exhale. As you grip at your esophagus, you'll feel that raspy, silky, whistling sound. What we call Ujjayi breath, victorious breath in yogic areas. 
So again, as you grip an out esophagus, <clears throat> I'll demonstrate it a few more times. You get that soft, silky, whistling, sighing breath. If you can't get that, don't worry. But as you do that, you can still zip up pelvic floor, scoop out the abdominals, keep breathing out through the nose. If you can get this Ujjayi breath, great. It'll just give your mind even something further to focus on. Be aware of the sound of the breath, the feel of the breath, whatever breath you're doing. And as it weaves a tapestry of relaxation and every single organ and cell sing to the body. Lovely. Just encouraging them restful relaxation responses and endless streams of comfort as you get that Ujjayi breath in the back of the throat. That natural focusing breath. Sometimes you'll do that when you're trying to focus on something, bang in and now in something, or maybe threading the needle, a nice fine move. You'll naturally do that breathing in a not so much overemphasized fashion that I'm doing it, but you'll, you'll have a sighing breath, focusing breath. Okay, so as you keep zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out your dominoes, either Ujjayi breath or not, if you've got that Ujjayi breath, that seashore breath from the back of the throat, that's going to even further help you elongate the out breath longer than the in breath, all the breath, especially the out breath. Helps stimulate the thyroid gland, which helps with weight control, etc. Helps us build the heat in the body as you do that now. Helps us fan the fire to burn all the toxins in the body. Ujjayi breath, lovely. So let's link this to the motion. So it's a nice motion. Again, you're just going down to like a Uttanasana from yoga. Again, if you want to bend the knees or have the feet slightly wider to make it a little bit easier, if you've got any really bad back problems, you can do that. Okay, you can soften the knees. But basically, it's your basic Uttanasana coming down here. If you want to soften the knees, have the feet wider to make it easier on the lumbar region of the back, the lower back, you can do that. Otherwise, feet together, straighten the legs, but don't quite lock out in the joint. Just shy of locking out, nice and soft on the knees. The movement here, now again, I, in the traditional form, it's just back here. Again, don't want to be sort of slipping desk. You've got any problems with your back? I would spread the fingers, support the back in a McKenzie sort of back extension manner. Okay. Again, you come to here, then you come back and hop on the heels. I wouldn't do the hop on the heels back here, especially if you've got any really bad back problems. Okay. I'm probably an over safe, but again, so again, then you exhale down and your breathing come up. So I'm gonna demonstrate. Gonna calibrate and synchronize and integrate the breath of the motion. So we come back here. Again, you're gonna just breathe in here and you're gonna have a little extension of the back here as you breathe in. That goes with the extension of the spine. You come back here first and then you hop on the heels. You don't do it back here. That's quite important. And you exhale and just follow the exhale down. Your breathing come back up on the in breath you do that bit of extension you come back shoulders over hips head over shoulders and you hop on the heels elongate the part on the exhale coming down for as long as you like tiny waist here breathing coming up sharper a little bit of extension there okay and exhale and come down for as long as you like. So again, you're gonna do it here, so it's a, and you exhale down. Long on that part, and you breathe in a bit sharpish, and just go here. Okay, so you're elongating the movement on the out breath to bring in them hypnotic responses. Lovely, that's the eight. So we're gonna start on the first move of the 18 form added on to this. Okay, so that's the eighth. Okay, we've got the ninth coming up of the whole 26. Bang.